Hey everyone, welcome to this video on queue implementation using Array. As per our last video, queue in data structure, you must have a basic idea of the queue as an abstract data structure and its applications in software development. If you haven't checked out that video, we highly suggest you watch it before proceeding further. You will find a link to that video in the description box below. Let's have a look at our plan for the session today. But before we begin, if you're new here and haven't subscribed already, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon for interesting tech videos every day. First, we are going to take a small recap on queue in data structure. We then dive into the declaration of a one-dimensional array and pointers for queue implementation. Finally, we will formulate code for queue data structure using the C++ coding language. On that note, without any further ado, let's get started with the recap on queue in data structure. In the last session, we introduced you to queue data structure as an abstract data type. As we know, when we talk about data structure as ADT, we define it as a mathematical or logical model. We specify all the features or operations available with the data structure. So considering that we learnt a few basic features of a queue in the last session, let's go ahead and learn more. A queue is a linear collection of different data types that allow insertion at one end and deletion at another. Unlike any other data structure, the queue ends remain open, allowing it to have different functionalities at both ends. Additionally, the queue works with a restriction that insertion should be performed at the rare node and deletion at a front node. Those processes of insertion and deletion are called NQ and DQ respectively. We discovered both of these operations along with three more supportive procedures named as peak, isFull and isNull. Now that we are considering to implement a queue data structure, so all these operations will become different functional blocks. Additionally, all these operations must take constant time and it must not depend upon a variable like the number of elements in queue or the size of the queue. By that, what I mean is the complexity of all these operations must be O of 1. Having said that, let's dive deep into the strategy to implement queue data structure. Until now, we have understood that queue is a special kind of list with some restrictions on insertion and deletion. And there are two approaches to deal with queue implementation. The first one is array-based and another one is linked list-based. In this session, we are going to focus on array-based implementation. Initially, let's say we want to create a queue of integer elements. For that purpose, firstly, it is essential to declare an array of random spaces. Let's take 100 as the size of our array. That means our array can have a maximum of 100 integer elements. The declaration of an array is made with this line of code, int q 100, where int represents integer data type and q is the name of our array and 100 is its size. The array that we just initialized is going to store our q. By that, what I mean is at any random index of an array Q is going to start with two marked ends, front and rear. In this array, I'm showing front of the Q towards the left and rear towards the right. For making those end nodes, we need to initialize two pointers, front and rear. At this moment, as our Q is empty, so both of those pointers should point towards minus one. So initialization of these pointers should be done as int front is equal to minus 1 and int rear is equal to minus 1. When the insertion or deletion happens in queues, these pointers will be either incremented or decremented. So they are an essential part of this queue implementation process. Now you must be clear with the array and pointers declaration part. So let's dive further and formulate code for queue implementation using a one-dimensional array in C++. It is essential to include header files into our source file as we cannot access standard C++ functionalities without them. That is why here we are going to load IOStream and standard input-output files along with using namespace std. Once this is done, we will initialize our array along with front and rear pointers. Remember, we always have to declare the size of an array before compilation. That means we cannot update the size of an array at runtime. This scenario is the biggest limitation of queue implementation using arrays. 
Having said that, let's proceed with Pointer's declaration. Now we are done with the initialization process. We will now work on implementation of queue functionalities. Let's first work out supportive queue functions like isNull, isFull, and peak. isNull function validates if the queue is empty. And as per our previous discussion, when both front and rear points to minus 1, then the queue is considered to be empty. So the condition to determine if queue is empty will be if rare is equal to is equal to minus 1 and front is equal to is equal to minus 1, it will return Q is empty. If the Q does not satisfy the previous condition, then it is not empty. So by using the else condition, we can display the Q is not empty. Next up is isFull function. This function validates if the queue is full, and we can clearly say that if the rare pointer is equal to the max size of the queue, then our queue is going to be completely full. Next is peak. The peak function extracts the element where the front pointer is pointing without removing it from the queue. For this functionality to work, our queue must contain data elements in it. What I mean is our queue should not be empty. If our queue is not empty, then data at the front node can be accessed. This is how we implement supportive queue functions. Let's immediately dive into the development of main queue operations, NQ and DQ. For NQ operation, if the queue is full, then our function should prompt an overflow error. For that to happen, we have to put this condition. If the front pointer is pointing to minus 1, then we have to increment the front pointer to 0 manually. Otherwise, it can be incremented by rare plus plus. After pointer incrementation, we have to ask for a data element to enter into the queue. Once the data is given, it should be inserted at the position where the rare is pointing now. Finally, let's code the final main queue operation called as dequeue. 
If the queue is empty, then there is no element for deletion, so it should prompt an underflow error on screen. Also, if there is only one element left inside Q, then both pointers should again be pointed towards minus 1. For that, let's write another condition here. If both the previously mentioned conditions are false, then deletion of an element can be achieved by just pointer incrementation. We have implemented all the queue functionalities here, but we haven't implemented a function that can show us how our queue looks. So for that, let's implement one more function with the name display. This function should prompt the elements of the queue on the screen. Elements will only be printed if the queue is not empty. Hence, we have to check for the emptiness of the queue first. Finally, we are done with the hard part. So let's arrive at the main function to contemplate these operations in order to visualize outputs. We are going to use a switch case to take a user command. Thus, not to waste your time on this, let me just get done with this block ASAP. That's all, we are done with the queue implementation using arrays. Let's just examine if our code works fine or not by compiling it. This program should return a console that asks the user to give commands for performing different operations. So as you can see on your screens, if I input 1, I can perform insertion in a queue. Let's perform some insertions now. We will insert 4 elements, first 3. Then 21, next 78, and finally 12. After inserting these elements, we will print the state of the queue using case 3. Now let's also check the DQ function. If we perform a DQ operation, then 3 should be removed from the queue. Let's check if it is remote using the display function.
And yes, our code works just fine. Now, if you're concerned about this code, then don't be as we can send it over to you if you drop your email IDs in the comment section below. Additionally, you can also try to run it on your local system to have a better understanding of the concept. So with this, we come to the end of this video. I hope this video on queue implementation using arrays was informative and exciting. If you have any queries regarding this topic, let us know in the comment section below and we will get back to you. Thank you so much for being here and do watch out for more videos from us. Until then, keep learning and stay tuned to Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.